look, um, you apparently used Mutt Lang uh, as producer this time, as opposed to Roy Thomas Baker, who you pretty much used steadily in the past. Uh, what was behind the change? Well, two reasons. One is that uh, we just wanted to try to change the sound around a bit, and I, I respected him as an engineer, and uh, you know, I thought he was a, a wonderful technician. And the other reason was because we wanted to uh, record in England. Hmm. of the USA this time. Why England? Uh, just for the environment change, you know, just to, to get out of the States has England always been something special to you musically? Um, it's always a fast changing scene. Uh, it's always been special only in the fact that it, you know, the trends change quickly and music moves faster than it does in the United States. I think some people have likened your sound or your image to that of, an, of say, uh, an English type uh, uh, thing as opposed to an American type thing. You still was out in Boston, though, right? Yes, that's where we, you know, base out of, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, the, uh, the sound seems to be a little more keyboardish these days. Uh-huh. Uh, how is that? Uh, we just ended up using, uh, you know, technology a bit more. Um, we used Fairlight computer for a while, and, uh, I think it just happened that actually Mutt Lang even wanted to investigate um, keyboards more than guitars. And uh, it just seems that it came out that, you know, some of the some of the material is more keyboard oriented, but uh, it's not really something that is going to affect, you know, the future of records. It's just something that we did on that particular one. Mm -hmm. Did you leave more decision making up to Mutt Lang than you had to uh, Roy Thomas Baker in the past? Um, in, in terms of sound, I don't. Th I don't think so. As far as sound, yeah, the, the well, total sound. Uh, I don't. As far as the sound goes, it was you know what getting the sound, and, and we pretty much left that up to Mutt because he was great at that. Um, but uh, as far as decision making, no, I don't. I don't think any more or less than with Roy. <laughs> Other than the uh, increase in keyboards, how, in what other ways do you think you changed your music? Um, well, maybe on the lyric level. Oh, really? Yeah, somewhat. Um, some of the songs are first person songs, kind of third person. Then, uh, but I don't know, you know, we, we still sound like the cars, so it's hard for me from the inside out to, to say what the real changes are, I think it's easier for people on the outside to hear what the real difference is. Mm -hmm. you know, it's harder for me to really hear it. I believe that uh, two and a half years went by uh, before, uh, in, in between albums that is, and uh, I think you guys all pursued solo activities there. Um, how about in your own case? Did uh, making a solo record change your outlook towards the group or your, your approach towards the group? Um, yeah, somewhat. Uh, I was, you know, I pretty much did the solo record all, all totally on my own. Um, so I didn't, have, I didn't use the elements of the cars, you know, under specific, uh, you know, things that they were good at. So I, and, and lyrically as well, I, I didn't feel at all like I needed
flew by pretty quickly, actually. Hmm. So that probably would be the case with anybody. You, when you work with a band in a, in, in a band situation, you have to make certain compromises. Whereas in the solo, you don't. What, what sort of compromises did you find yourself freed of when you made your solo record? Uh, that I didn't have to use every every member in the band on every song. Oh. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, or some songs could have been without certain instruments, and the, the textures and styles would have been different because everybody in the cars, you know, has a specific style of playing, and when you merge them together, you get the cars. Um, without those elements, uh, you know, there's something missing from that cars. You know, it's, it's not the cars anymore. And it doesn't sound like them to me. So, uh, you know, that kind of thing. I didn't have to, you know, arrange songs with, with uh, them in mind. Hmm. Would you ever consider the, the prospect of producing yourselves? Um, yeah, I would. Almost at this time. But, but I, uh, since I just come off a solo record, you know, I to rest from producing and making all the decisions myself. So we did get a producer, but I'm sure that would be, you know, that's definitely in the future. Hmm. Do you think if you produced yourselves, you would automatically be the one in charge, or would it be a, a full band project in terms of the production? synonymous with the, with the cause. Uh, how much uh, uh, do you uh, contribute to the, the total uh, group sound, though? How much do you think? Do you think you're just like, a, is everybody contributing equally, or do you think you're putting in like more than half or something? without you, mm -hmm. Well, I don't expect so. I don't think there would be any songs, A. <laughs> and there wouldn't be any uh, vocal hmm. on that level. You know, I mean, Ben sings as well, but but it just would not be, no, it wouldn't be the car. No, hmm. I, no it could be, uh, I, uh, I don't know. I just can't imagine how it could be. <laughs> Actually, I, I almost can't imagine how it could be with, with anybody. Maybe. Hmm. is because during the uh, two and a half year gap there, there was quite a bit of speculation that uh, the group was going to break up and stuff, but uh, I take it you're, uh, as, uh, back to, uh, you're as strong uh, as you ever were now? Yeah, I would say so, and, and actually there was no, uh, you know, that was just like something to, something to print. I mean, the band really never had Well, on its way to be in there. Hmm. The video uh, of 
you might think was uh, quite good. Who handled the ideas behind that? Well, it was a director named Jeff Stein, and it was a, a New York company called Charlex that did all the special effects. And, uh, you know, Jeff Stein pretty much came up with the, you know, idea of, uh, you know, all the little plays and all the little uh, vignettes, you know, that are contained within it. Mm. You get a lot of those fancy videos these days. Is it mainly the uh, uh, production companies or, or is it the artists? Well, it, it depends. I, we've, we've tried to do some... Uh, I've tried to do videos this time with people who have never done videos. Uh, we've just completed... Uh, actually, we're, we've just completed five videos. Uh, we did one video with uh, Andy Warhol, uh, who's never done a video before. And we just completed the video with uh, Timothy Hunt, the actor, mm. which is a real, real dramatic sort of video. And, uh, you know, we're just like trying to use people who have never done videos. Mm. What point did you do five videos? Are you planning on releasing five more singles from the album? We sort of got caught up. We just sort of got hung up and doing them. We, we kept doing them and doing them. And <laughs> and it's just like, you know, we've got an interesting idea and then we just like go ahead and do it, do it. I, I was, uh, actually when we first started doing videos for the record, I never really expected to do five at all. Um, because I'm not sure how I feel about doing videos philosophically. I'm not sure that I, uh, whether I like the idea or not like the idea. Why is that? What, what sort of misgivings do you Well, because I'm a fan of radio and I'm a fan of imagination. Um, when you do a video, you get locked into an image of what the song could mean. Uh, I'm very paranoid about what videos, you know, uh, I would prefer people to, to hear a song and use their imagination about what it's about. And when you get it on film, then you have a rapid eye movement relationship with the song instead of a, you know, uh, imaginative one. <laughs> Why did you uh, decide to use, <coughs> say, Andy Warhol? Uh, because I like his films and I like him as an artist. And I thought that his, uh, his view of, uh, you know, whatever we... Uh, I just thought that his view would be unusual. Why Timothy Hutton? Which it was. Huh? Why, why Timothy Hutton? Because Timmy had a great, a great idea for the song that... Uh, we pretty much did the songs that they wanted to do rather than the ones, you know, we would have <laughs> needed for videos. Timmy Hutton, because he was just so thoroughly, thoroughly involved and, you know, up for doing it. And he had such great ideas that I couldn't see why we should, you know, it just seemed like a great idea to do it. And it looks wonderful. It's probably my favorite video of all. Was there anybody you wanted to work with that you couldn't get? I mean, among the five you made, though, among the five videos. Uh, no, I mean, uh, probably, I can't, I can't think of any names that we, we wanted to use that we didn't, you know. Mm -hmm. <coughs> you said you produced a couple of bands, uh, during the two and a half years, or I, I've been informed that one of them is what, Bad Brains? Yeah, the Bad Brains. And what, what was the other one? Uh, well, I did some I did a uh, something with Iggy Pop. Oh. And um, let's see, a couple of local artists actually. Hmm. Is there a call Iggy Pop was signed to what is it, the Animal label? Yeah, he was, but he's he, he's not anymore. He sort of goes from record to record. No. <laughs> <laughs> and you worked with him post Animal label? Uh, not for the Animal label. No, just as an independent. I think some of it may be coupled with the David Bowie record. That he's, you know, he's David Bowie's going to do a record with him too, and I think some of the stuff will be on there. Hmm. How did you get together with Iggy Pop? Uh, I just uh, actually he called me and hmm. asked if I wanted to do it, do work with him. And I said sure. 
<laughs> I do, I do like Iggy. I've always been a great fan of Iggy, so, so uh, it was a thrill for me to do it. Hmm. How did it turn out? It turned out great. It's like his, it's like his old stuff with, with, you know, good sound, real high energy guitars, and great lyrics. Mm -hmm. Nothing like any of the stuff he's been doing in the past few years. Mm -hmm. What about this uh, reggae band? Is, uh, have you always been a reggae fan? Well, the Bad Brains are considered an American hardcore band, but they also are Rastafarians, so they do do dub stuff and reggae stuff. <laughs> so, um, I did both on this record. Um, it's sort of a mixture of hardcore and reggae. So, it was great to do reggae. I learned more from them, probably you know, because they had their own ideas about the sound of the reggae stuff in particular. So, it was a good education for me to do that. Maybe you could define the word hardcore for me? I don't quite follow you. Well, hardcore in this country means pretty much uh, music that's uh, sometimes politically inspired, sometimes just socially inspired lyrics. Uh, it's extremely fast music. Uh, maybe ten times faster than any music you would hear as far as playing goes. Most of the songs only last anywhere from a minute to a minute and a half. And it's just sheer total energy all the way. So is it like a, a punk type thing? Uh, I would guess so. Probably way beyond punk. Hmm. What, what, what sort of uh, criteria? Much more dangerous than punk. Where is that music happening, though? Uh, it's happening all over the country in small pockets. Um, you know, it's a very cultish thing right now, and it's, it's, like I said before, it's a dangerous kind of music for people to associate with, so a lot of, a lot of American record companies that all try to keep it down under. Hmm. But it surfaces on its own. It has its own fancy and its own movement. Hmm. So is, is that sort of a uh, event for your uh, uh, experimental desires? Because it, it seems that the cars are pretty much, like you said, gone back to the chorus sound that they started out with, whereas I guess you also have sort of a desire to uh, attempt more experimental things. Is that how you uh, vent those desires? They're, they're the only things I enjoy doing, you know, things that are, uh, you know, not pop. I I, my taste in music are not, uh, pretty much not what you would hear on Top 40 Radio. Mm. However, I do like good songs. If they're good songs, I, I can appreciate it, but I'm pretty much into what happens on the streets, because I think the only thing that's creative happens on the streets. Mm. What's your main exposure to music, then? By going to clubs. I'm not sure that we're, I'm, I, we have 
haven't really decided whether we're going to Australia and Japan. Do you want to come, or is it just uh, oh, I'd like to come. I thought it was one of the greatest experiences of my life coming to Japan. Why is that? Just, just a beautiful culture. Uh, just, you know, it's the, it was just the most one of the most enlightening places I've ever been. It's probably one of my favorite places in the world. <laughs> um, color photographs. We only have one color photograph of the group here. Uh, we would appreciate any others you might have in the office there. Oh, I'll tell Billy because we've done some sense. Okay, and then also, if, if possible, we'd like to arrange a photo session. Uh, so we can get... Sure you can. Um, yeah, you should just see Billy, but he told me that we wanted to do that, so... Well, maybe you should put him on at the end then. All right, then. Um, okay, I guess I shouldn't take any more, well, any more of your time. Uh, okay, Steve. Yeah. Nice talking to you. I appreciate it a lot. Uh, please take care, man.